Hey, it's Ron. Um, this is the first Altoids project I've done. I've seen a few here on YouTube. I'm guessing you probably have as well. Um, what this is, this is uh, my own version. I've seen a few videos and just kind of meshed um, two things together. Um, I kind of messed up with the Dremel there at the top. There you can see the big gaping hole. Um, this USB port that I salvaged from my mini PS2 to USB. I just cracked the case open and took the USB port out. Um, this is the Altoids. Oh, let's see if I can get it open. Uh, it looks kind of messy just right now. I've just got black tape over top of the batteries right there. I've um, got a little on off switch. And then right here, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm going to screw it on the back there is a 7805 5-volt um, voltage regulator. And then I've got two 9-volts right there. And the reason I have the two 9-volts is to charge the iPhone. I have the iPhone 3GS. And that actually won't charge um, with just the one 9-volt. If you have an iPod or an iPod Touch, it will. Um but the iPhone wouldn't so I had to add the actual extra battery and I've got the two batteries in series so that means I have the positive from one going to the first lead on the 7805 and then the second the black the negative here I've got ran to the positive of the next battery and then the negative of the second battery I've ran straight to the switch here um, the reason I do that is you get more amperage basically uh, milliamps and I mean it's 19 volts but that voltage regulator will take anything up to 35 volts and uh, drop it down to smooth 5 volts um, and then right here on the USB port I don't know if you can see those right there but they're uh, 100k ohm resistors it's um, brown black yellow gold is the colors on there if you don't have a, a multimeter to test or whatever um, but yeah it's just then right here is I don't know if you can see that little add-on that's the actual screw from the other side and then I just put a little bubble of solder over top of the screw that I cut off um, and then set her up here Let's see. and then I actually soldered I and mean, you should have seen it whenever you first looked at the port though I actually soldered just so it wouldn't move whenever I plugged it in um, and the little switch you just, just flick it um, I don't know if you can see that let me turn it off and and then uh, that's my actual it's really hard to see on their iPhone there. But yeah, it is charging. You can hear the sound right as it comes up. Ooh. Trying to get it to focus, but it won't. <laughs> but yeah, I gotta flip the switch. And then that comes off and put it back and then it starts charging. Uh, basically that's it. Um, it's really easy. I did, I got all, everything but the Altoids from Radio Shack and then the USB port I had already. Um, but like I bought some of the shrink tubing just for, um, just the leads to the um, transistor here, the voltage regulator and then through the battery. Um, let's see what else I had. Um, I had the uh, strippers, of course. My auto strippers weren't long enough, or didn't go to a high enough gauge. The wire I used was 26 gauge. Um, I used the two 9 volt connectors I got from Radio Shack as well. See, uh, 9 volt snap connectors. 
the flexible kind, not the uh, solid kind. And you can use either one, really. Yeah, they just look like that there. And it's they're not really flexible. It's just a different material. They're a little flexy versus the hard plastic. Um, I kind of just was in a bind at the moment, so I bought Radio Shack batteries. Uh, they're 4.99, and then they had some kind of deal. If you buy two, you get two free. So we got two free batteries. I did try it in the Altoid small can. Um, let me show you. That's the battery, and it doesn't close all the way. So yeah, that was kind of out. Now I've seen a few videos from a couple different people that have used the Altoid small, but they used. Um, a different battery, like a three volt batteries, but they were like eight bucks a piece, or eight bucks for a two pack basically. Um, and I bought an extra C7805 uh, I believe that's really about it that I needed for this project anyway. Um, so yeah, also uh, when I was soldering, I had this uh, little glass deal here that I got from the customer. And then this little silver uh, copper in here is just a scotch scrub, basically. Like a bristle pad type deal, but it's copper. And I just use that to keep my, uh, my soldering iron tip clean. Um, and as always, I always use lead solder. I use uh, the 60-40. Uh, I don't really believe in the lead free. It does take a uh, more heat to actually melt the solder than it does regular lead solder, which can be dangerous to components. Virtually, I mean, on this, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to hurt too much. Um, but yeah, uh, if you got any uh, suggestions? Let me know. Leave them in the comments. Uh, it's Ron. Have a nice day. Bye bye.